Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. And with the championship now over, it's time to select my team of the tournament. Well, Timmy's team of the tournament. Tournament. T T O T T. Trademark. I've already done my top 10 tries and there were some incredibly tough decisions in that one. Go and check out that video up there if you haven't seen it already. Now, into the TTOTT. What am I thinking here for my team? I'm thinking that players need to probably have started at least three times in the position they're going to be selected for. So there's some wiggle room there, but that's basically my criteria. And we're looking for the most consistent performances throughout the tournament. You know, one brilliant game is probably not going to get you selected. You need to have really good output across the whole tournament. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Starting with the forwards, as always, and the, the loose head berth. Now, who was in the running here? Our Cyril, Mr. Bai for France, I thought was a really good performer throughout the championship. Probably hasn't reached the heights that he has done previously, but in a French team that struggled early doors, I thought he was still performing really well. I think Ellis Genge grew throughout the tournament. Uh, some discipline issues around the Scotland game and, you know, not quite on it. But by the end of the tournament, was performing really well. Pierre Schumann, Scottish loose head. Again, a great game against England and France, actually. Um, but then just drifted off in a couple of the other games. But a real strong contender. However, my pick is going to be Irish loose head Andrew Porter, who is continuing to battle perceptions in the scrum about his angle and his elbow. But I just thought his energy and his output throughout the tournament, his aggression, the amount of times he gets in the game with his carries and his tackles, and that wonderful bit of shithousery against Wales makes him my loose head for this team. On to Hooker. And I thought the tackling of George Turner for Scotland was amazing. Uh, real physical presence there in the Scottish pack. I thought Jamie George did his nuts and bolts really well for the vast majority of the tournament and actually showed up in loose play. Once England got playing, we saw Jamie George with the ball in his hands, which we haven't done for a long, long time at international level. So that was brilliant. Great shout out for Nicotera from Italy, who I thought was a real physical presence. His uh, his body height in contact situations is supreme. But this is going to go again to Irish player Dan Sheehan. Uh, record number of tries, I think, in the tournament for a forward and a just constant threat with a ball in hand and a physical presence. Line out, again, was, was pretty much perfect for Ireland for the majority of the tournament. So he gets that shirt. And by the way, I've chosen green for the background because Ireland won the title. Uh, no other reason. I think they deserve that, don't they? They deserve that. Okay, on to the tight head slot. And I thought Dan Cole rolling back the years for England proved to be a really solid tight head, which is what you want, right? You want your scrum to be rock solid. And Cole gave that to England for long periods of this tournament. I think Ty Furlong is getting somewhere back towards his best, physical and aggressive, um, really dynamic as well on occasions in the loose, which we haven't seen for a little while. And uh, Fagerson for Scotland, I thought I had a really good tournament all the way up until when he got annihilated by Ireland in the final game. Uh, and again, I think maybe just time caught up with him having played a lot of minutes. But Xander Fagerson had a really good tournament as well. However, my pick in the tight head shirt is Weenie Antonio for France who, as I mentioned Cyril by earlier, I thought the front row in for France did a pretty good job throughout the tournament. They were let down by people behind them, mostly. And Antonio's energy in these last two games, carrying around the park and playing longer minutes than I think he normally does, I thought he was the absolute standout tight head in this tournament. Into the second rows, and this gets really difficult, I think, because there's been a lot of good performances, but single performances, and then they haven't continued to play the rest of the tournament. A lot of players have come in for the old game or two and swapped through injury or whatever. So this is quite tricky, but I think Maritoji was getting somewhere back towards his best for England. Huge amounts of energy, just being that nausey pain. And discipline was much better for Mara this tournament as well. That's sometimes been an issue. I think if he played throughout the entire tournament, the Miafu for France 
could well have been a contender here. His just physical size and bulk, but also his handling ability is absolutely supreme. I think he could have been a contender. I think somebody who's had a really good tournament throughout without setting any real heights, you know, not highlight real type tournament, but I think Daft Jenkins for Wales has been an absolute workhorse this tournament. Some of his tackle counts, some of his rock entry stats are insane. But however, I am going to go for big Joe McCarthy. I think he excelled on the opening night in France. And yeah, things were quieter after that, but that was such a high standard that it's very difficult to get back up there again. I think he's had a very solid tournament. And I think a lot of the solidity around this Ireland team, uh, particularly in the set pieces, come from him. So Joe McCarthy gets the number four jersey. On to the other second row spot. And again, very difficult. I think I think Scott Cummins had some really good games for Scotland. He was really nausy against England and just got in the way to break down pain. Um, and I thought he had a good tournament. I thought Ollie Chesson for England also showed huge physicality and a uh, great line at Naus. And he, uh, you know, let down in this selection decision by the fact that he moved to blind side a little bit. But I thought he had a great tournament. But my pick's going to be another Irishman, Ty Byrne. I think he's just all-round play. He's so invaluable. His ability to break the line when he's running, his ability to turn over the ball, but his scrum and line out are solid as well. I just think he's such an all-round second rower. And again, compared to the heights that we've seen him, this isn't vintage Ty Byrne, but he still had a really good tournament and I'd be picking him as my second row. On to the number six jersey. And I am not going to be picking any open sides at six. I'm going to be picking people that played six throughout this championship. And it gets quite tricky because actually I'm not sure there was huge amounts of standout players that played six. And again, with a bit of chopping and changing from various teams, it makes it quite difficult. But I thought Andy Christie for Scotland came in towards the end of the championship and showed great promise, real pace and danger about him. I think Ethan Roots in the early days of the championship, so good promise for England, great physicality, man of the match on his uh, on his debut way in Italy. Again, somebody else that's only played a couple of games, but Seb Negri, I thought, made a big difference for Italy when he came back into the side. Just that ability to get over the game line, maybe when you're struggling a bit in phase play, Seb Negri gives you that, and I thought he was brilliant. But somebody who I thought has consistently performed throughout the championship and has raised towards the end here has been Francois Cross of France. Played a game or two maybe at number eight, but I think he's been the outstanding blind side. So gets the slot for me. Into the number seven jersey. And as usual, in most teams, this is one of the most competitive shirts. And I could make a case for quite a few people here. Van der Fleer, uh, really good tournament. Nausea at the breakdown. Unbelievable work rate. Tommy Reffel, the, the Tommy turnover, the king of the turnover, but also his attacking running lines and the amount of support play he got through in this tournament for a team that didn't play a huge amount of rugby was outstanding. Or Sam Underhill was looking back somewhere towards his best as well. Olivon, just a huge presence for France. And I think Rory Darge did a great job for Scotland as well. Really nuggety around the breakdown and a proper sort of open side dog of a flanker. But... The jersey for me goes to Michele Lamoro, Italy's captain, set a new tackle record for the Six Nations Championship this year. 103 tackles, led with absolute clarity as always. He's just an inspiration to me, and I think he gets that jersey. Completing the back row, and um, Aaron Wainwright had some great games in early, particularly early for Wales with his carrying. I think Caelan Doris. Uh, had a great championship. Not again, just compared to the heights that we've seen them, maybe not quite as a, you know, really outstanding, but had a good good championship. And I think Jack Dempsey had real strong moments for Scotland as well. But the number eight jersey for me is a very simple decision because I think he's player of the tournament as well. And that is Ben Earl from England, who just got England go forward with his footwork and then drive. He was enormous at the breakdown. He made a ton of tackles. And, you know, in phase play, he looks like a centre running um, 
running in the backs and he just he was outstanding the amount of output from him the amount of quality output from him as well was was amazing and it was good to see now he's got you know real genuine things to celebrate you didn't see so many celebrations about the turnovers and things like that spending more time playing the game which i'm a fan of so that's my set of forwards and we shall move on to the backs scrum half and yeah a few good performances here i think i think uh, the Italians chopped and changed a little bit, so hard to tell from them. But I think Ben White of Scotland played with a huge amount of zip. I think uh, Thomas Williams did as well for Wales. Hard for them to get the nod because they didn't get as many wins and uh, not as dominant as a team throughout the tournament, which makes it harder for the scrum halves. I think Alex Mitchell played with a huge amount of pace for England when England got into the into into phase play. You know, England produced quick ball towards the end of the tournament, and then Mitchell accelerated it almost, which is super important if you want to play fast somebody who excelled again at the end of the tournament nolan legaric for france but didn't really have enough game time to justify making player of the tournament but my pick goes to jemison gibson park who the things i just said about mitchell he kind of accelerates play when you get fast ball amazing option taker always seems to pick the right pass and then to be able to stand in on the wing as well and do it seamlessly I thought he was outstanding and is possibly Ireland's most important player at the moment. On to fly half. And Ben Russell had an up and down tournament. He had some moments of absolute genius. And it's tough a little bit because they've gone a little bit more pragmatic. He has, I think, personally, and Scotland have as a team. So you don't see as many uh, daring moments from him. You don't see him trying crazy things quite as much. So maybe people are rating him on that. But I think a lot of his game management, particularly in the England game, has been really good. I think Jack Crowley did a great job for Ireland, stepping up into the shoes of Johnny Sexton and looked completely at home. Some real gorgeous gliding sort of play from him, taking the ball to the line, dummying, putting the ball in behind. Lovely stuff. I think Paolo Gabisi for Italy had a really great tournament. You, we know he can do the stuff at the line. We know he's a brave tackler, but I thought aerially he was really outstanding as well this tournament, getting diffusing high bombs on a regular basis. And uh, yeah, I thought he was really great for Italy. But my pick goes to the general-in-chief, George Ford, who aside from some goal-kicking issues in Scotland, I think had a really excellent tournament. I think when England was struggling in some of those early games, when there were a lot of mistakes, I think he managed the game incredibly well, thinking of the 50-22 against Wales, thinking about some of the high spiral bombs that he put up to try and slow people down. The way he put his foot on the ball against France when France were charging at the start of that game. And then, most importantly, though, his attacking play, the way he takes the ball to the line, the way he commits defenders and the accuracy of his passing, I think, is what has got in that shirt for me. I'm a huge George Ford fan, and he makes my team. Onto the left wing, and we have some some uh, outstanding candidates here. I think Rio Dyer for Wales, in a team that struggled, has looked so lively. Talk about getting your hands on the ball, talking about getting involved, and he's just absolutely everywhere and a live wire. Always beats defenders. I thought he had a great tournament. I think Ioni for Italy is another handful. Like he just always seems to make ground. He always looks dangerous, and I think he's very important to Italy. You know, he's a bit of an out. You know, similar to Negri, where if they're struggling a little bit, you know you can give it to him and you know you'll get go forward ball. So I thought he had a great tournament. Somebody that had one incredible game and then didn't really break through much of the rest of the time, Duan van der Merwe, that single game against England was supreme. Those finishes were outstanding. Um, but he struggled a little bit in other times in the tournament. And, you know, aerially a couple of times, defensively a couple of times, and never really got that big bashing, carrying, going that we know he can do. My pick at number 11, though, is James Lowe. Such a sort of totem for his team. Just like you feel the energy of Ireland flows through Lowe. Um, along with his incredible kicking, for the most part, he's scuffed a couple this championship, actually. And uh, the number of tries he scored as well. When, in, when they were struggling against England, he got on the end of a couple of flowing moves and scored some great tries. So... James Lowe is my pick in the number 11 jersey. Hardest one of the bunch for me. Number 12, 
I think there have been some brilliant standout performances. I think before he got injured, Sioni Turpilotu for Scotland was really playing well. He can do it all. He's an absolute all-rounder. He can take the ball to the line. He can be physical. He can pass out the back. And he's got kicking skills as well. The way he was going, he would have been a contender for this. Sadly, got injured. I think Ollie Lawrence, the form in the later games in the tournament, he's looked outstanding as well. Just his appreciation of when to run, what, what holes to run at, his running lines, subtle but really effective, along with the power that he's got as well. It's not going to be him. It's going to be one of Menoncello or Bundiaki, who I both think, well, they're both in running for the official player of the tournament, which makes this incredibly tough. Menoncello is an outstanding rugby player in every single facet of the game. His timing of the ball at the line, the accuracy of his passing, his physicality is absolutely something else for a man his size. He is such a bull. It is insane. But you've got a Bundiaki against him who is playing the rugby of his life and does all those things as well. And it's a really tough, really tough decision. I think, no, it's, a, it's basically a toss-up. But I just think being part of that winning team, having been playing... I don't know. It's really close. But I'm going to give it to Aki. I just think he deserves it a tiny bit more, but hugely tough on Tommaso Manoncello, who's had an outstanding tournament. Number 13, and again, some decent performances here. I think Henry Slade has been quietly very effective for England. I think Fiku's had the odd good performance and good moment. Been a little inconsistent sometimes defensively. Hugh Jones, I think, was great when he had Tua Pilotu alongside him. Went a little bit quiet later in the tournament. I think George North has had a very solid tournament throughout, just quietly effective. You know, some big moments, actually, against England, some huge carries. Uh, but this one goes down to, again, the Irish-Italian uh, mix-up here with Ignacio Brex doing all the things that I've just described that Menoncello does. And, uh, you know, a huge physical presence, but great hands, accuracy of pass, all the stuff. And he's also added kicking into his... Arsenal this season, as well as Italy, become a little bit more pragmatic. Up against Robbie Henshaw, who I think was Ireland's best back for the first three games, he probably dropped off a little bit, coincidentally, when Gary Ringrose <laughs> became available again. Um, for me, it's uh, it's Brex. I think he was outstanding in every game. And, yeah, he makes that team of the tournament. It's it was If it was over the first three weeks of the tournament, it would have been closer. But I think... Brex was consistent throughout and is an outstanding rugby player. On to the right wing, and not a huge amount here for me. Um, not many people who played the whole tournament and just consistently put their hand up with outstanding performances. But I thought Tommy Freeman did great for England. I think his work off the ball for his try against France epitomised what he's all about. I think his aerial work chasing kicks has been outstanding. And whilst defensively, Getting into this new system, there's been a few clunky bits. I think he's overall defended quite well. However, this goes to, a, you know, just a generational talent for France in Damien Penault, who, in a struggling French side, looked like one of the angriest man, men on the planet for various games and just always seemed to find a way to get into the game. Just, just on the end of that uh, Ramos speculative punt against England, you know, he just carried and carried and carried and got France going forward. He scored the only one of the only tries against Ireland as well in that opening game. Outstanding player. I'd have him in my team every day of the week. Again, at 15, with players moving around, a few injuries, a little bit difficult to pick somebody that's been really outstanding. Also, not enough games, but he, he played well when he played. Kinghorn, I really love as a player, but Scotland didn't really play too much after he got back in the side, so we never saw the best of him. I think Winnett had a really commendable championship for Wales, but just faded away the last couple of games. He looked like that fearless confidence kind of just drifted away from him a little bit, which was tough. I think Furbank had you know, a couple of really strong games for England, signified a change in uh, playing style as well, or it, you know, that's just the way it worked out, but he you know, did some great attacking rugby, but a few mistakes and obviously really only played two and a bit games. So struggled to give it to him. I think Ramos had a fairly strong 
tournament for France. His goal kicking is obviously hugely important. Um, but again, compared to what his heights are, Hugo Keenan didn't reach, you know, his real heights. But for me, he was still the best fullback in the tournament. If I take all these performances into consideration, uh, I would be wanting to have him as my fullback. So what does that add up to? It's actually a huge amount of Irish. They won the tournament. They were the best team. And eight Irish people in this team mean, you know, re reflects that. We've got three French, two English and two Italian as well. Tough on Wales and Scotland. They had some good players, but they came up against, you know, some of their better players came up against better players here as well. So very tough for those two nations. Anyway, for what it's worth, that's my Timmy's team of the tournament. Um, but I'd love to hear what you think down below. Anybody that you think I've picked really shouldn't be anywhere near it. Anybody that I haven't picked, do you think should be a shoe in Let me know in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a friendly conversation where we can discuss all things rugby. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there if you don't mind. It helps other people find it, which is good for everybody. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.